It makes sense that a famous country star would put up shop right in the middle of Gatlinburg, only a few hours from Nashville. But are his eats as good as his music? Let's take a look at this new addition to the country music star food scene. Welcome to Bear Facts, where we explore the Smoky Mountains one bear fact at a time. What does Dolly Parton, Blake Shelton, Jason Aldean, and Jimmy Buffett all have in common? Not only are they all highly respected music country stars, but they have all put down stakes in the Smoky Mountains. Each of these highly successful music entertainers have not only invested time and money into the Smokies, but they're also using their reputation and fan base to propel their business and garner momentum. It should come as no surprise that Gatlinburg has become a hotspot for the country music celebrity movement. Though not super close, Nashville is still only a four hour drive from Gatlinburg. And if you're at all familiar with country music, you will know that Nashville is the epicenter for all things country music. Many celebrities are opening restaurants in local tourist destinations, such as Gatlinburg, using their fame and reputation to propel their business into success. And Jason Aldean is one of the newest members to this elite club, though ironically Jason isn't the actual owner of the club, rather it's owned by TC Restaurant Group, a company that has several partners, including Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, Miranda Lambert, and Florida Georgia. Though restaurants can provide a high profit and help promote individual artists, they also come with a high risk. This is why most all restaurant chains like this one are not owned by one person. Share the benefits and the risks. This business model is also used to protect the individual artists from sue happy people by preventing them from going after the individuals themselves. Jason L. Dean's Kitchen and Rooftop Bar has two other locations, one in Nashville and the other in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Gatlinburg location was open in August of 2023 and is the newest restaurant from the train. This restaurant is right on 441 in the heart of Gatlinburg, a little over a mile from the gates of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. They are attached to the Sun Diner, a small breakfast brunch restaurant that is open earlier in the day. Since Aldine's focuses on live entertainment, food, and drinks, their hours are 11 a.m. to, well, whenever they choose to close. The closing times aren't posted on the website. Though it's a great location, or in a great location, it doesn't have free or even close parking. There are paid parking areas both behind and across the street that will cost between $10 to $20 a day, depending on how far you're willing to walk. The restaurant's design was tailored to bring Aldine's vision to life, infusing the space with elements that pay homage to the singer's southern roots, while also appealing to a diverse clientele. From the cozy booths to the custom-made artwork adorning the walls, every detail has been carefully curated to create an inviting atmosphere that reflects the spirit of country music. As you walk around the property, the theming is consistent and spot on. The first thing you might see when entering the restaurant is the stunning sculpture set up on the ceiling above the checkout counter. The sculpture sets the tone for the entire restaurant with the rustic guitars mounted around a blue sky lighting fixture. I'm sure we can talk for hours about the symbolism and meaning behind this piece, but to be frank, I thought it was just cool. You will also see a set of stairs on the left and a small gift shop below to the right. Oh, and a not so subtle security guard hanging out the base of the stairs. Where there be alcohol, there be trouble. There are three levels to the restaurant. The first is the lobby and gift shop. The second level is a sit down restaurant. And the third is where you can find another bar, the rooftop and main stage area. There is an elevator in the back of the gift shop for those with low mobility or people like me who just don't want to walk the stairs. On the second level, there is a lot of seating. It can be a little cramped feeling, but they do have tables for larger and smaller parties. This level has another small gift shop and a bar as well. In keeping with the Southern Country vibe, there is a giant tractor that takes up a lot of counter space in the middle of the bar. I like that small touch. 
The menu was inspired by these southern foods that Jason L. Dean likes, but were actually created by Chef Tomas Wazak. I hope I said that right. And you will notice that they are very consistent with their theme. You'll find a lot of southern dishes from pulled pork, ribs, and fried shrimp. The second level is for folks who want to sit down and eat. Since this was our goal, we asked the hostess to put us on the wait list to get the seating in there. The hostess station is on the second level next to the doors of the dining area. If you're looking to listen to music, have a small bite to eat, or want to hang out and drink, you might want to head up to the third level. We walked out and ended up with a seat near the windows, which were actually garage doors. From these seats, we had a great view of Gatlinburg and the area around. It was fun watching tourists below as we waited for our server and food. I won't make this video into a review, but I will talk about what we ordered. My husband got the ribs. The ribs were tender and moist, but they are dry rub. Dry rub seasoning can be a little more dry, but I thought they did a good job with the ribs. And there is Jason L. Dean's signature barbecue sauce at your table to add if you want more flavor. The sauce is sweet and not very spicy, but if you like a little heat to your barbecue, this will not fit the bill. The ribs uh, come with two sides. Uh, my husband chose the steak style french fries with the potato salad. All meals come with coleslaw, which is sweet and not the vinegar style you sometimes see in the south. I got the brisket sandwich, which really looked like pulled pork. Since there's also a pulled pork sandwich on the menu, there must be a difference, right? I couldn't tell, but maybe someone up comments can explain the difference to me. My meal also came with fries. I like that the fries had a little seasoning and my sandwich, though it didn't look very impressive in the picture, was actually pretty good. I had no complaints, but I'm not that picky about my barbecue. Others might disagree with my evaluation, but feel free to share your own thoughts in the comments. One main downside to eating on the second level is that if you wanted live music, you won't get it here. Nope, the second floor is only for dining, though they have a bar so you can drink it, you know, while you're eating. But if you're looking for that live entertainment, you need to go to the top floor. The rooftop level has a large stage area where local artists and even El Dean himself will sing from time to time. The stage is up front and center and there is a massive guitar hanging above it, setting the scene. In front of the stage is a large bar and a small dance area for folks who want to kick up their boots and do a little line dancing. When it's warmer, they open up the patio and guests can hang out, listen to music, and enjoy the views of the surrounding mountains and city below while having a drink or a light snack. At night, the city lights and colors are quite something to see. If you enjoy country music, this will be the perfect place to hang out with friends and family and just listen to the music. There isn't an admission price, at least not that I've seen. Maybe on select nights they have a cover charge. I can't say, but there is live music most days. The rooftop area also has a small menu of items you can buy. Though it's a smaller menu, it has the basics like pulled pork sandwiches, burgers, fries, and loaded nacho chip dishes. You will need to order and pay for these items at the checkout by the bar, and uh, there are seats and places that you can hang out and eat after once you've gotten your food. The only downside to hanging out on the rooftop level is that if you don't like a lot of noise, it gets very loud and busy up there. For families with young children and those who just want to eat and have a quieter meal experience, this isn't the place for you. Instead, go to the second level dining area. You'll still get to experience the restaurant's art, decor, and food, but minus the loud music and energy from the bar. Now, there are downsides to Aldeans. One, prices are not cheap. Though they are comparable to other places in the area, you will end up spending a minimum of $25 a person. The other downside is that since they are so new and in such a popular part of town, seating can be hard to come by. Don't anticipate a quick meal or an easy walk-in. 
We went during the day on a weekday and still ended up with a 30 minute wait. The last Debbie Downer is that the food selection is small. If you are vegan or vegetarian, you won't have a huge selection, though you can find things that will meet your needs. There's also a lot of things to like about Jason Aldean's. If you want a theme or focus on Southern cuisine, this place will give you that. And some might like that the menu isn't very big, not being too overwhelming with choices. And the food is pretty decent, at least the time I tried it. Another great selling point is that they cater to a variety of guests. You can pick from either a lively, energetic rooftop bar scene or more family-friendly dining area. And if you are a super Jason L. Dean fan, you might just get a chance to see him. I've heard he visits once in a while. Also, did I mention the decor? Really like how they designed it. Not the stairs, but everything else is bright and colorful and not too garish. They have a lot of live music and bands coming and going, and I really enjoy the theming and decor. Overall, we had a good experience, but for us, it was a one-time thing. There really wasn't anything we disliked about it, but we aren't big music fans and don't drink, so we probably would only go again if we had friends who hadn't gone before. We would suggest that you try it at least once or go in and have a drink. It's worth it just to see the art and experience the country theming. If you're a big Jason L. Dean fan, it also has a lot of his work and they will be playing his music as you dine. I hope that this video helps you plan your visit to the Smoky Mountains. Please know that we at Fairfax do not get paid for our videos. You're getting an honest review from our personal experiences. But facts and things change, so please let us know if you learn anything new and want to share your experiences in the comments. Thanks again for visiting us at Fairfax of the Smoky Mountains. Please click that like button and subscribe to our channel.